it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to BT and our Looking for Life series where we examine the life of Jesus in the Gospel of John. We make these videos to help people hear and see who Jesus is so that people might believe and follow him. Wherever you are in your faith journey, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. And we hope that this is a blessing or helpful to you in some way. So we have been in John 16, but for this episode and for the next two, we are doing something called Buddha, which stands for build up and tear away. I've done Buddha for years in small groups. And as I've been with uh, men and women who are trying to follow Jesus, we often discuss things that we want to build up and what we want to tear away in our lives. In John 16, as we've been in this John series, Jesus talks about the Spirit guiding the followers of Jesus in truth. And he also talks about the world's ways and how they're different from God's ways. The early church was trying to figure out how to live in this new Spirit-led way while also trying to deprogram and reject all the ways of, of the world. And often in letters to the first churches, Paul and others would list out these old ways of the world and give examples and then the new ways in the spirit. For example, in Galatians, which we looked at in the last episode, Paul says, put away the works of the flesh or, or world. Different books put it different ways. And then he names things like idolatry and anger and drunkenness. And he says, get rid of those things. Those are no good. And he says, build up this Holy Spirit way of living, which is loving people and joy and peace and patience. So I'm gonna read another one of these lists, uh, Roman 12. And this is a time for you to do some reflection and consider what is the one thing that you must build up and one thing that you must tear away. And we have a document that we include with these episodes uh, that Jenna made uh, that's gonna list the ways, the kind of the old ways and the new ways in Romans. So, and here's what you can do. You can do this Buddha and I have a little pass. So it's read, circle, pray, decide, tell. R-C-P-D-T, R-C-P-D-T, I'm gonna get it in your head. Read, circle, pray, decide, tell. So you read, or I read, and you pray, right? And after you read, circle or note what jumps out as you as one new thing to build up and an old way to tear away. And don't do more than one or two, right? Again, if you wanna go deep on this, you can keep coming back to it over and over again and developing and tearing away and building up other things. But after you do that, pray. Ask the Spirit to help you and guide you how to build this up in your life and how to tear away. And then you decide what must you do to incorporate this. So you decide and then tell. And I just said it's always better to work on growing in Christ together in community. These letters were written to communities, not individuals for the most part. So tell someone, do this work with someone. All right, uh, so I'll read Romans 12. And for this one, we're gonna have a guest do the Buddha. So Steve Brown, uh, he's one of the pastors from First Baptist Church of Red Bank. He'll be sharing with us his Buddha after I read. And this will be the whole chapter of Romans 12, as soon as I find it. Romans 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and not all the members have the same functions. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right, for this episode, we're going to send the Buddha over to Steve. Thanks, Jared. First, let me say, <clears throat> I love Romans 12. It is one of my favorite passages from one of my favorite books in Scripture and is one I need to come back to often. So as I read Romans 12, one thing I circled is do not be conformed to this world. So I asked myself, what does being conformed to this world look like? And what is the first thing I need to work on? The thing or things I need to build up to help me not conform to the world. As I read on, I circled, uh, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be haughty. So certainly ego and selfishness has a lot to do with conforming to the world. I can't help to think of what Paul wrote just a few chapters earlier in chapter seven, that he doesn't do the good he wants to do and does the bad he doesn't want to do. All of us, because of our sinful nature, naturally veer off course toward being egotistical and selfish and thereby conform with this world. I think one of the ways we show this is how we react uh, if we are not getting what we think we deserve, uh, or if our rights somehow have been violated. Before I was called into ministry, I had lost my job and was interviewing for a new position. I noticed that when I didn't get a job that I had previously interviewed for, I would complain to family and friends. I would tell all of my achievements, my education, my certifications and experiences. I would tell people that, you know, the interviewer was stupid or small-minded or short-sighted, that he must have had been threatened somehow by me, that, you know, that I'd take his job someday. <laughs> I was implementing the Buddha, the B-U-T-A plan then <laughs> by building myself up and tearing away or tearing down anything that got in the way of what I thought I deserved. Not a great testimony from someone who was supposed to reflect Jesus to the world. The, the same Jesus who laid aside all of what he deserved, right? Honor and glory and praise and worship and came to earth to subject himself to his own creation. Never once did you hear Jesus say to those in authority, hey, do you know who I am? Do you, do you know who you are talking to? I, I am God, right? I, I, could, I could crush you in a millisecond. Bow your knee before me and give me the honor I deserve. No, Jesus did quite the opposite humbling himself to the level of servant. The king of the universe, creator of all things, imagine that. 
If anyone deserves to complain or demand his rights and what is due him, it is Jesus. With all that is going on today, it, it's so tempting to get into the fray, right? Demand to be heard. Demand what is due you. But that is what the world does. And Paul is telling me, telling us not to do that. So what do I need to do? What do I need to build up and tear away to ensure that I don't fall into that trap? I like verse 18. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. I, I want to build up promoting peace. I want to build up making sure my words and actions aren't said or done in such a way that is disrespectful or harsh or defensive. I want to build up having uh, civil conversations with people that have, you know, people that have different experiences and viewpoints than I have. I want to take away thoughts that my perspective is always the right one. I want to take away the desire to justify or defend myself, remembering that vengeance is with God and that he will justify and defend me if I am obedient to him. And I need to do these things even when, especially when, people do not want to be at peace with me. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for Jesus and what he's done for me, for us on the cross. Taking on the role of a servant, <laughs> humbling himself. Oh, I pray for your help uh, that we may remain humble that we may be a winsome witness to who Jesus is, that we may shine a light. So for me, Lord, I, I, I ask that you help me, you know, help me to be proactive in um, having conversations with people who are different than I am, who have different views than, than I have. And help me to do, uh, do these things with, uh, with gentleness and, and respect to all people. Uh, even those who are against me, even those who have no desire to have peace with me, that help me, as far as it is up to me, be at peace with all people. So I ask for that help, Lord. I ask for that peace. Uh, I ask that you help me not uh, be tempted to enter into an argument, to enter into the fray, to defend myself. Because you, Lord, you, Lord, will defend me. So I thank you for who you are. I thank that you, that you care for me, that you will take care of me, that you will guard me, that you will help me. Uh, because I think all of us listening today want our lives to reflect Jesus to the world want our lives to build your kingdom, not our kingdom. So help us, Lord. Help us to be humble. Help us to be loving. Help us to be caring. Help us to have a listening ear. Help us to do all things with gentleness and respect that you may be glorified in all that we do. And I pray these things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now go in peace. Be the salt and the light that Jesus calls you to be.